Meanwhile, across the Atlantic, the Americans were trying to leave as little to chance as possible with the development of the war's best defended bomber, the Boeing B-29. It was also the biggest. I remember the first time I walked out on the ramp and saw one of these sitting there and I knew there was no way you could get that much metal up flying in the air. It's big and heavy. There's no power steering to it. The flight deck up here, uh, it's kind of like sitting on your front porch flying your house. The all-American B-29 had all the mod cons to transport its 11-man crew in relative comfort. It was the world's first combat aircraft with a fully pressurized cabin. This meant the crew members didn't freeze at high altitude during their 3,000-mile round trips to Japan. The B-29 also had a revolutionary defense system which made it a deceptively dangerous plane to pick a fight with. J.B. Hudson was on the bombing raids to the Pacific in 1945. On all other World War II bombers, the gunners had to either hand hold the machine guns or they had to get inside of a turret where the guns were located. Uh, that was not true on this plane. We had what we call the computerized remote control system. The navigator put into the computer things like altitude, outside temperature, airspeed, things of that sort. The gunner had to know the wing spread of the plane coming in. If it was a Jap zero, Japanese zero, it would be 39 feet. He would crank that in, and he would aim straight at the fighter. The computer calculated the lead, so you have to realize that while the gunner is aiming at the fighter, the guns are pointed somewhere out in front of the fighter. A very effective system. A novel feature of the system allowed the gunners to take control of each other's guns, depending on who was best placed to see the target aircraft. A dead man's handle automatically shifted control to another airman if a gun aimer was injured or killed. Efficient crews soon saw a dramatic improvement in their ability to defend themselves. But the Japanese had one last strategy to get through the bombers' defences. It shot down an awful lot of Japanese fighter planes. They quit coming in from the tail because anything that came in from the tail usually got shot down. Now, in place of that, they did other tactics, such as ramming the planes, which was a desperation move near the end of the war. And it didn't happen too often, but just often enough to frighten you. There's one thing about those kamikazes, they don't have reunions. The continued onslaught on Japan was devastating. The B-29 incendiary raid on Tokyo claimed 180,000 lives in one night alone. Despite this kind of bombardment and the prospect of invasion, the Japanese kept fighting. Eventually, the Allies decided on a way to put an end to the war in the Pacific. I run into so many Japanese that say this airplane saved their lives because their parents would have fought till their death to defend their homeland. If it hadn't been for the atomic bomb, that the invasion would have killed so many million Japanese that, that it really it stopped the war. Us B-29 people, there's no way we'll ever say we won the war with a B-29, but we stopped it. 